I coded villagers differently in Minecraft because honestly, they needed it. Villagers are dumb. Out of all of the different types of villagers, only farmers do their actual job. Just imagine how many emeralds you would have if you actually worked for them. What a jerk. In each village, there are tons of working class villager types, and I've always wondered why they don't actually do anything. There's, of course, the butcher, but where do they actually get the meat? Where do you get the meat? And then, of course, this guy, the fisherman, who, let's be honest, basically does absolutely nothing but stand around a barrel. Thank you for all the work you do, fisherman. And you. Don't even get me started on you. The shepherd is notoriously known for doing absolutely nothing when you could be doing something. Okay, I think you get the point. It's time to make some changes around here, starting with you. Oh, yeah. It's honestly a wonder that by now, the shepherd doesn't actually shear sheep. I mean, it seems like it would be pretty simple and very effective because, I mean, villages have a lot of wool. Where do they get their wool? So for our first update, making villagers smarter, the shepherd now actually does shear the sheep, which just makes sense. I don't know why this isn't already in the game. Now, obviously this could be farmed in a very nice way. We'll show that here in a little bit, but for now, let's move on to the next villager. Next up, let's focus just for a moment on the butcher. Where are you at? Go ahead. Yes, good. You found your new job. Time to get to work. Do you really expect to feed the whole village with just one villager working bread? Carrots and potatoes? Come on, G go out. You, you know what you have to do. Oh, I can't watch. Unfortunately, now the butcher will actually butcher animals, which is very sad, but thankfully it'll only butcher adult animals. So this is kind of a nice way for villagers to farm food. Next up, it's your turn, fisherman. That's right, grab your fishing hook. Don't walk away from me. Come on, you know you've always wanted to, and I've even completely cussed. There we go. I made you a custom pond, and now you're fishing in it. That's right, the fisherman. Fishes. Who would have thought? I mean, it, it doesn't sound that crazy because it makes sense and it probably should have already worked from the very beginning. So as you would expect, they actually do fish. It works just like a normal player and that means they can get treasure, they can get food, and the best part is they'll share their food with other villagers while keeping all of the treasures in a nearby barrel. Now, you may have noticed that their rate of actually performing actions is a little bit lower than it probably should be, and that's because they are currently a novice. But if you actually trade and grow and make them essentially level up, they'll actually start doing tasks at a faster, more efficient rate. So that way you could actually level up your villagers and it'd have more purpose than more emeralds and more trades. Come on, almost there. Are you leveled up? Come on. Hey, there we go. And he's now an apprentice. So theoretically, he'll fish just a little bit more and maybe even get better loot. Who knows? I bet you feel better now, don't you? We've taken all of the weight off of your shoulders, but it gets even better. We're only halfway through updating villages to so carry on. Actually, you know what? Don't carry on. Go take a break. Let the other villagers work for once. Now, if only we could find something for you guys to do <laughs> other than be stuck in a pen. Now, this next change is a little bit more interesting. It involves the emerald, the exclusive currency for villages all around the world. But what if that wasn't actually the case? What if each different village type around the world in different biomes used a different currency? For example, we are currently in a taiga biome, and as you can see, we've got a brand new ore known as ruby ore, which, as you can see, drops rubies. This is a new currency exclusively for villages found in the taiga biome. Or, yet again, another example is in the savanna biome, which could also have its own exclusive currency, which we can, oh gosh, oh, get from down here. This is topaz ore, which I gotta say, looks very fancy and very, very nice. But I just love the fact that this would add new gems to find exclusively in each biome that you visit, making it just a little bit more fun to go caving. Now, how do I get back out? That's the question. And of course, that brings us to the desert. But before we continue, if you haven't already seen my video transforming the desert, well, I really recommend you check it out. It's one of my favorites and it is awesome. You can click on the i card in the top right corner now to check that out. 
For desert villages, the currency is a little bit harder to obtain because you can't find it in the overworld. Oh no, no, no. To find that, we're going to need to go somewhere even hotter than the desert. That's right, the nether. Some villages have a very easy to obtain currency, whereas others might just be a little bit more difficult and require you to go to places like the nether to obtain, in this case for the desert, amber ore. I just think it would be amazing to have to travel around the world of Minecraft in order to actually interact with all of the villagers around the world. Plus, I mean, look at it. Yet again, another ore, please. I mean, who doesn't like looking at a new chest filled with ores? I mean, ores are amazing. They make caving fun. But in this case, with the different currencies, we've got amber, ruby, topaz, and emerald. Each one could actually have different value. For example, a plains village might be very subpar beginner game loot. Whereas something like the desert with amber might offer even better trades for the later game of Minecraft. That way there's just a little bit more progression outside of just tools and armor. The villages progress. I think my favorite part about updating villagers this way is that it kind of makes the world feel less lonely. The villagers can now help us with the basic survival tasks that we have in Minecraft. But I'm actually curious to see just how awesome something like this could be for Minecraft by creating a couple of custom farms myself. Wish me luck. But first we're actually going to need something a little bit easier to work with, unlike this terrain. So, punch. Oh. <laughs> There we go. This will do nicely. But first, creative mode. <laughs> Let's kick things off with an AFK fish farm. Now, I'm no mumbo jumbo, but I do in fact love making automatic farms in Minecraft. In fact, farming is one of my favorite areas of the game. And even though I'm definitely not a professional, I think something like this will work out just nicely. And just like that, we are ready to go. As you can see, I have quite the contraption here. Each of these little areas has three different farmers. Well, it would if this guy wasn't so stubborn. Come on, there's your barrel. What are you waiting for? And then of course, a circle of fence post in the center. And the way this works is the fishing rods actually go and basically fall down after hitting the fence. So that way they don't get too far. And then of course we've got hoppers to collect all of the loot. But I could just stand here for hours. And as you can see, not only are we going to be getting items, we're also getting XP, making this the ultimate fish farm. With only 10 minutes of waiting, we have 19 levels of XP and also a small collection of generous loot. This is what I'm talking about. I absolutely love farms like this. I think we could make this even better by also utilizing the farming villager. So on all four corners, we're going to build carrot and potato farms. This is going to be interesting. Good, yes, farm the carrots, farm the potatoes, farm the fish, and all of the treasures that come with it. I mean, I can kind of see why this maybe is a little overpowered. I mean, look at all this loot. Plus, we've got basically infinite carrots, infinite potatoes, and a whole lot more. And this is only with a little bit of work, so I don't know. Maybe I could see why something like more villager abilities wouldn't be in the game, but come on. I mean, this is awesome. Who wouldn't want something as amazing as this? Hmm. I don't know how to build it, but I'm sure somebody could also do an iron golem farm. And then you would be unstoppable. But since I don't know how to do that, I'm just gonna blow up the farm instead because who doesn't like explosions? Oh, ho, ho. Uh, I'm uh, I'm not that good at placing TNT apparently. Yep. Mm-hmm. I can definitely verify that is a lot of damage, and that is an old meme. But anyways, that is basically it for this idea and this concept. It's very simple. We didn't really change all that much, but yet it's very effective. I would love to see villagers actually do the task that they say they're going to do. It would make them more reliable and more useful and, let's face it, more efficient. I mean, this would be incredible, even if it is a little bit overpowered. But but of course, let me know what you think down in the comments below. 
If you enjoyed this video, you may also enjoy Origin Realms. It's a Minecraft server created by myself and a bunch of really talented people with the aim of creating a new Minecraft experience that you've never before seen in Minecraft multiplayer. We've got custom mobs, custom blocks, and even new biomes, all made without the use of any mods. Seriously, it's as easy as joining the IP on screen now. Well, my friends, that is going to do it for today's video. I certainly hope you enjoyed because this was a lot of fun to make, but also a huge challenge to make. I've got to give a huge shout out to Ocelot who developed this mod so that you could actually see what idea I wanted to portray. So that being said, if you enjoyed this video, I think you'll also enjoy these videos that I picked out just for you. If you click to the left, you can see how we coded pillagers differently in Minecraft. And if you click to the right, you can see how we gave the savanna biome an update in Minecraft. I think you're going to love them both, so what are you waiting for? Thanks for watching.